Hello and welcome to the program. On June 10th, around 7 a.m., Russian law enforcers raided a number of homes of Crimean Tatars in the occupied peninsula. As a result, eight people have been detained. All of them were accused of cooperating with the Hizbut Tahrir organization, which is banned in Russia. To talk more about this, we are joined in, stu in the studio today by Maria Tomak. She's a coordinator at Media Initiative for Human Rights. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Good evening. So, um, this, this kind of news, the raid uh, on crime in Tatars of news are not that much covered in the media, but would you say there is an increase or it's, a, it's, a, it's, a regular, it's on a regular basis? Um, I would say that we have a very um, bad trend of, um, of the, the uh, so to say, of the race of number of those who are arrested. Because mm -hmm. in the previous years, the number of those people who are arrested simultaneously, I mean, it was uh, two, three, maximum four uh, persons. Now we see that the number uh, is 24, as it happened previous time. Now it's eight. And uh, besides, we have very dangerous trend of arrest of women. Uh, it's not the criminal cases yet, it's just administrative kind of offences, which are um, the occupying power are claiming that these women are uh, related to, but still it's very concerning. Uh, but the main thing uh, which one should know about all of this arrest is that almost all of these people are related to Crimean Solidarity Group, not to Hizbut Tahrir mm -hmm. actually, but first of all to Crimean Solidarity Group, which is the the only uh, initiative, civic initiative, which appeared in Crimea after the beginning of occupation and which is purely human rights in terms that they are providing some humanitarian aid to the families of political prisoners. They're following the occupying uh, special forces, the secret service uh, forces, which are actually making these uh, searches in Crimea and Tatar uh, houses. So, and they are very, I mean, I think that uh, occupying power uh, is feeling very un uncomfortable about them because mm -hmm. due to them, I mean, thanks to them, we can see all of these uh, videos and pictures of searches and uh, otherwise we cannot see um, all, all of this. And I, uh, I would like to add such an important detail that uh, Crimean Solidarity Initiative was mentioned in the resolution of uh, UN General Assembly. I think it's a very high um, I would say um, acknowledge, acknowledgement mm -hmm. about their um, activities. Uh, so I think that it's like a very disturbing um, initiative for Russia. So that's why they try to oppress them. So is they're basically cracking down on the tools on, on, on people who are basically the eyes and ears of, of human rights watchdog on the field. Exactly, that's, that's truth. Mm -hmm. So that's why they try to make them silent. Uh, but it, that, that's not easy because uh, I should say that there is another uh, tendency here because they are arresting the whole families. For instance, uh, one of the ladies, she came to Kiev a few weeks ago. She was attending press conference here. Uh, she has three men in her family arrested simultaneously. Mm. It's awful. Uh, so that's why these people uh, have nothing to lose. Uh, and I'm saying that not in terms that they are <laughs> planning some terrorist attacks mm -hmm. or something like this, not at all. They, I mean, that they're um, trying to get engaged with all these civic initiatives. And I have to say that there's not even a single fact that Crimean Solidarity Group of, or any of its members conducted or uh, planned any violent acts. And even in the materials of the cases, which is uh, provided by FSB, there is no information about any violent actions or plan planning mm. any violent actions. And it is, it is a, a, an, an important nuance here because um, this, this group we talked about, Hizbut Tahrir, uh, is banned in Russia, is banned in certain Western countries because some of its members went to other territories. One thing, it does play in the narrative of the FSB, of the of in Russian authorities, mm. occupying authorities, of saying you know, we're counter-terrorism. How to appeal to Western countries that are, you know, kind of linking this, the, the, both, both of them, how to appeal to them and, and help uh, Western media, Western audience making the difference between crime and solidarity and this 
a group mm -hmm. uh, which is a good tarier, which is okay. affiliated to terrorism. Uh, first of all, I have to underline just not to help to Russia, Russian occupying power, mm. that uh, Hezbollah Tahrir is not um, criminalized in any of Western countries. They, in I mean, England, in, in, they are, they are England. forbidden mm. in mm. their activities are forbidden in Germany, mm. but they are not criminalized there. Mm. It's important to admit, uh, and they can uh, act freely in other countries. And they are not criminalized in Ukraine, for instance. And when Crimea was, uh, I mean, before the occupation, uh, they operated there. Yes, I have to say that uh, State Security Service of Ukraine followed them. It's like uh, an open information, but uh, they followed uh, mm -hmm. Ukrainian, pro-Ukrainian pro organizations as well and all that. I mean, I'm not an advocate of any of the organizations. I'm just trying to say that um, they indeed try to use uh, this, um, but I would say that they try to use the moods of suspicion towards the Muslims in the current world, uh, which is uh, we know all uh, spread about. out into all Western countries. Yes, yes, exactly, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to say that it, it works. Mm -hmm. um, I always face, I mean, we, um, uh, frequently we can see some suspicion uh, from the side of uh, our Western colleagues and politicians, and they say, okay, you have Crimea which is occupied, you have Crimean Tatars which are obviously oppressed, and in this situation there might be some um, moods, like radical moods, but they're not there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, actually, if you analyze the situation in Crimea before the occupation, were there any terrorist attacks or any terrorist group groups in, in Crimea detected uh, any um, uh, on some point? No, that there were no. Uh, and that's why I think that it's just not relevant. But uh, obviously, they use it, and actually. Uh, this fact is also uh, w w was also underlined by one of the resolutions of UN on Crimea. There were uh, like the the thesis that Russia uses anti-extremism, misuses anti-extremism and anti-terrorism law in order to prosecute the dissents. So it's quite clear that we have just uh, very uh, the situation is same here. But you know, it's interesting to interlink it to the current Russian situation, because we can see an enormous and fascinating support towards the journalist of Medusa. Yeah, we saw, online, we saw the, the, the protest online online here platform, in the Yes, and mm. he enjoyed like a huge support, and that's very important. And I think that due to this support, he was released. And moreover, even the criminal investigation mm. was dismissed. Was mm. Yes, so it's like unprecedented, I would say. But the question is, how about all the other, uh, all the others people who are uh, kept in occupied areas, but even and along Crimean, Russia, Crimean Tatar, Crimean Tatar, uh, not only Ukrainian, and, but yeah. and Russians themselves, but in particular Ukrainian and Crimean Tatars prisoners. So they will remain mm. imprisoned. Which brings me to my uh, <clears throat> to my to my next question. Uh, we talked about the fact that Russia is using this kind of disinformation around Crimean solidarity, around uh, around uh, about around Crimean Tatars in general. Uh, can this disinformation campaign can be used? Uh, can it be, uh, let's say, filed uh, in part of evidence as complaint against Russia? Uh, in front of, let's say, international courts, in front of, of you know, other Western authorities that you know, can say. So. Uh, as for the courts, mm. uh, it is also filed uh, in in uh, a submission, as far as I know and understand, in, in the submission which was uh, submitted by uh, Ukrainian Minister of Justice uh, previous year uh, against Russia in European Court for Human Rights. It's such a so-called intergovernmental complaint. Um, and it's related actually to illegal persecution of Ukrainian citizens, including Crimean Tatar, related to the international armed conflict. So it's already there. And as far as I know, uh, Crimean Prosecutor's Office of Ukraine uh, keep on documenting all the facts of illegal persecutions, including the latest ones, which happened in March, and uh, probably the, the recent ones, which happened just a few days ago. Uh, so, um, I think that in further that uh, Russia will feel that in the international courts. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that today, 
Uh, it's very sad to say that, for instance, Russia, probably Russian delegation will be back and probably sanctions will be lifted against Russia in the uh, Parliamentary Assembly and Council yes. mm -hmm. of Europe. Yes, mm. and uh, we, will we will have another session in the upcoming weeks, in the end of June. And we are all waiting for, for this in order to s see how uh, Parliamentary Assembly will vote for the resolution on the 24th of June. That will be very important to see how uh, particular countries will vote also, whether to, um, uh, to, to let Russia be like a member without any consequences um, mm -hmm. uh, due to their activities, aggressive actions uh, towards Ukraine. Um, and, 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 and in Crimea. Now, uh, and then to, to, to conclude this interview, you yourself are, advoca I, I, are a human rights, so you are advocating for, for human rights in Crimea when you meet uh, uh, let's say once and again, Western institution or representatives of Western institu institution. Uh, what kind of reception do you receive from it? Do you receive a, a say, a hearing ear? Uh, and what more can be done for to raise awareness on this on this issue? I would like to admit such an important. Uh, Thing which I've noticed, uh, for instance, recently when we, together with my colleagues, we visited GlobSec, uh, Global um, Forum on Security Issues in Bratislava recently. Uh, it happened at the, at the previous week. And I have to say that, unfortunately, um, human rights issues, which are really crucial, uh, it's not uh, just some romantic stuff when you see, for instance, Syria, when mm -hmm children are killed with uh, gas, for instance, or w when you see Crimean Tatars, which are arrested massively in occupied areas, uh, it will not seem to you any um, like romantic thing. More dramatic, yes. But majority, yeah. at the same time, I can see on all uh, these global forums on security that uh, human rights issues are perceived in such a marginal way, I would mm -hmm. say. And that is something which I think we have to fix. That should be perceived uh, not dramatically, but probably pragmatically, because human rights is a part of security and you cannot talk seriously about security, not mentioning the human rights abuses. And I think that that kind of discussions, which are uh, where human rights uh, issues are excluded, that uh, contribute to Russia and their interests, because that allows them to be a part of the commu of international community, uh, to be an important player, uh, and to, so to say, to ignore the, uh, all the complaints about uh, serious human rights violations which they uh, are involved. Uh, it's not only about Ukraine, it's about Georgia mm. of 2008, mm -hmm. it's about Syria, it's about Venezuela and everything which is going on, uh, which is going on there. So I think that uh, we have to put this uh, issue in a very pragmatic way and to um, to try to prove to the international community that it's one of it's very serious and we have to talk about it in a very serious way, but not just to use it uh, or to marginalize mm. this issue. And we are trying to uh, do as much uh, as we can here to do that. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming uh, to come in our studio today to talk about this human rights issue and crime and uh, situation. That was Maria Tomai, coordinator at Media Initiative for Human Rights. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.